on a broad global scale, our consumption of plastics is increasing and those plastics are getting into the marine environment and harming the animals that are living there. My name is Tess Gridley and I co-direct the Namibian Dolphin Project and Research, Research and Conservation with Dr Simon Elwin. We're mostly field biologists, so we're going out into the marine environment regularly. And what we're seeing there is plastics. We're seeing them on beaches, we're seeing them in the sea, and we're seeing them in the nests of endangered animals like Cape Cormorants, and then also around the necks of the fur seals that we're working on. So the reason that we wanted to do this study was really to highlight what we're seeing every day when we're going out into the sea and into the marine environment. The fishing industry has also undergone significant changes in the materials they use and is now using plastics throughout for fishing lines, ropes and fishing nets. Now this particular study focuses on Cape fur seals which are endemic to Namibia and South Africa. So this study focused at Pelican Point near Wallfish Bay in Namibia and also at Cape Cross which is the largest colony of Cape fur seals. And Cape fur seals are very inquisitive, so they're like little puppies, little dogs, and they often interact with plastics when they come across them in the sea. So what we're finding is that seals are becoming easily entangled, um, particularly in aspects like fishing line, fishing net, uh, plastic bags, packaging tape. And then because of the very dense uh, fur that they have on their backs and their necks, uh, these materials are becoming basically entangled around the animals, and as the animals grow, they're cutting into the skin of the animal first, then through the blubber layer and into the muscles. This is then causing the animals to slowly uh, lose condition, and over time, it's a quite a slow and painful death. Particularly as these materials often increase the amount of drag that the animal faces, so it's much harder for them to find food. So we wanted to highlight this impact and our study, uh, which was led by our student, Stephanie Curtis from Stirling University, looked at which materials were involved, looked at the severity of injury, and looked at which age cohorts and sexes uh, of the fur seals were more likely to be impacted uh, by, by plastic entanglements. So at Ocean Conservation in Namibia, we are an awesome opportunity to be able to collect a lot of data. Um, we're dealing with hundreds of entanglements a year. Uh, last year over 600 to be exact and this year it's just not looking any better unfortunately. We are not scientists but we are very happy for this data to be used by people like Steph and the NDP um, to bring about some real change. We're particularly interested in understanding which materials the seals are becoming entangled in so that we can feed this information back to policy makers and back to industry. The, the date, the time, the seal colony, the precise area, so we, we have six areas here, then the GPS locations to have it on the map. There was a male subadult. We have some categories, so this is domestic or industrial because it's a plastic bag. Mm -hmm. It was severe and which it's not a sighting, it's a rescue attempt. We removed the entanglement, we caught it with the net, and that's the number for the year, 233 rescues, and then we take a picture. The only way we're gonna see any change is to have scientifically backed up data um, to bring forward to government. The only way policy change is gonna come in is if um, we have the right motivations and this needs to be done by proper scientists and motivated in the right way with, um, with the right information. So we are really happy to, to be facilitating this and um, to be part of, uh, of the bigger project. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time
What we found was that around 53% of the entanglements were caused by fishing related materials. So fishing lines, fishing nets, and we also had quite severe injuries caused by packaging straps. We would like to extend our research further, so to other colonies in Namibia, but also to South Africa. And so we're currently fundraising in order to be able to continue this research and conduct more work on marine plastics in Southern Africa. Take a step back to see the truth around you. From a distance, you can tell. You and me are meant to be.